Hello, and welcome to Acoustic Blues Guitar. I'm Mel Reeves. Today we're going to be looking at how to play a wide variety of acoustic blues styles. The first section of the program looks at the various techniques required to play authentic fingerstyle blues guitar. That's monotonic bass, alternating bass, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs, shuffles and fills. In part two, we have a wonderful collection of blues instrumentals which you'll hear played all the way through as performances, and then I'll break them down into small sections and talk about any special problems. Those of you new to fingerstyle guitar should work all the way through the first section before attempting the pieces. It really will make life easier. If, however, you're familiar with fingerstyle and alternating bass technique in particular, then do feel free to zap straight to the pieces, but be warned. These are real blues and not just made up exercises. Be prepared to wind back and work through the first section if you're having problems. It'll be quicker and less painful in the long run. The pieces themselves represent many different styles of blues playing, from the Mississippi Delta to New York, from Texas to Somerset. We'll be using some open tunings and there's some slide playing too. For convenience, I'll be using several different guitars but all of these tunes are playable on an ordinary six-string acoustic guitar. Most of them will work on a 12-string, but you'll need one with a good action. And they should also work on a nylon-strung guitar, although bends and bottleneck playing won't work as well as they might on a steel-strung instrument. OK, let's tune up and get started. Here's low E. And the fifth string, A. The fourth string, D. Here's G, your third string. Second string, B. And finally, here's high E, the first string. One of the reasons for the durability of acoustic blues, I think, is that for guitarists, it's a complete music. You don't need anyone else to play backup chords or to play the melody over your rhythm. You can do it all. Bass lines, chords, melody and solos. Now the first step to achieving this is to learn a simple bass line, which is played by the right hand thumb, and then superimpose some chords played by the right hand fingers. Here are the chords for a 12 bar blues in the key of A. The chords of A, D and E can be implied simply by playing the root note of each chord as a bass note. So for the A, we play the open A string. For the D, we play the open D string. Yep, and for the E, we play the open E string. Let's just play that bass line by itself. Example one in the booklet. One, two, three, four... And once you have that memorised, and yes, it must be learnt by heart, you might want to try muting the notes with this part of your right hand, touching the strings 
just this side of the bridge saddle, that's the white bit. Now you'll need to experiment a little with this, too close to the bridge saddle and the notes will ring loud and clear, which we don't want. But too far towards the sound hole and you'll completely damp out the sound of the string, which is equally a waste of time. Now a little practice is all that's required and you'll soon find the optimum spot for a nicely muted bass sound. Practice this for a while and then come back and we'll look at putting some chords over our bass line. There are two important points here. Firstly, the bass line is played with the thumb and keeps a regular beat. One, two, three, four, and so on. Secondly, to play the chords on the first few strings, we must use proper finger style rules. And that means your first finger is responsible for the third string, your second finger plays the second string, and your third finger must play the first string. This is vitally important. You simply won't be able to play anything worthwhile if you forever use only your thumb and first finger. Using your first finger all the time is simply like walking on one foot. It's stupid and inefficient. Now, however long it takes, master this exercise using the correct fingers of the right hand. One finger per string for the first three strings and your thumb responsible for the fourth, fifth and sixth strings. And no cheating. Here's the blues. One, two, three, four. The sound of one note picked after another can become very tedious. To avoid this, blues players have always used a variety of techniques to add more feeling and expression to their playing. A hammer-on can add not only a degree of smoothness, but also the illusion of speed to your playing. If we go to a basic E chord, here at the first and second frets, and lift off our first finger from the third string, we can play the open third string and by bringing down our first finger onto the third string at the first fret with a little force, we can get this sound. Here it is in context. The pull-off, like the hammer-on, enables us to make notes sound without having to actually pick them individually. In this example, place your first finger on the second string at the first fret. Play the string and with the note still ringing, pull your first finger off of the string in a plucking motion and the open second string will then be sounded. This is easier to play than it is to describe. Here it is in context. Slides are another way of adding smoothness and sometimes the impression of speed to a simple line. In this example, put your third finger on the second string at the fifth fret. Play the string and with it still ringing, keep the pressure on with your finger and slide it up to the seventh fret of the second string. Now I should point out here that there are two types of slide. For one, we hear both the pick note and the one that we slide to. For the other, we really only hear the note that we slide to. Listen.
Listen carefully to the pieces that you'll be learning later. Decide for yourself the type of slide that I'm using. Here's an example of it in context. We move on now to string bending. Now while this is not a technique used as much in acoustic playing as it is when playing electric guitars, it remains nevertheless one of the most expressive techniques available to a blues player. The most important thing to remember is that when you bend a note, you're changing its pitch. If you play the note G and bend it, it will no longer be a G. On acoustic guitar, you'll most likely be bending it up to G sharp or to A. Here's the example. And here's the G to an A. Now in Africa, where some of the roots of the blues are, uh, it's possible to play some notes that aren't in the Western system. So when you bend a note, sometimes you're bending it to a note that isn't one fret or two frets above, but maybe just a quarter of a fret above. Earlier, we looked at playing a monotonic bass line to support our blues. Musicians in the state of Texas seemed to develop a blues all their own, and this relied heavily on a monotonic bass line. In other areas of America, different styles of blues developed, with, for example, the happier blues sounds of the Reverend Gary Davis in North Carolina, and the darker, more rhythmic sounds of players like Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton in the Mississippi Delta. So-called ragtime blues players like Gary Davis and Blind Blake made extensive use of the alternating bass as a foundation for their styles. Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton used virtually everything from alternating bass to heavily strummed rhythmic chords. So to play anything other than Texas blues, we're going to have to learn the alternating bass. For the most part, alternating bass strives to imitate the left hand of piano players of the day, like Leroy Carr and even Scott Joplin. With a melody played over the bass, we can achieve an amazingly intricate sound. Now, it may take a little while to master, but it really is worth all of the effort. In our first example, we'll use the chords of C and G. Starting with the C, play first the fifth string and then the fourth string with your thumb, like this. Continue to do this so that your thumb is bouncing back and forth between the fifth and fourth strings. Now change to the G chord. For the G, we have to play the sixth and then the fourth strings alternating. So finally, play first the C and then the G as shown on the tab. So to conclude this section, here's a short blues with alternating bass. The chord sequence is a common one used for many blues. Well, that brings us to the end of the first part of this programme. The second part of the program comprises pieces from a wide variety of sources which should give you a broad and entertaining selection of blues that may be a challenge to master but which are great fun to play. In order to make the most of the pieces, you must be able to play monotonic bass, alternating bass, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides and bends. You must be able to use your thumb and first three fingers of the right hand properly. That's no bluffing. You'll be fooling no one but yourself because the music won't sound right. So be honest with yourself. Can you play all of the examples we presented so far without mistakes? If not, do take time out now to get it right. 
It'll save you a lot of time and effort in the long run. Right, end of lecture. Time for the pieces. Have fun. Most blues are songs and not straight instrumentals. In fact, most blues instrumentals are simply songs whose accompaniments have outlived their lyrics, which in some cases is probably a good thing. Shuffle and Fill Blues has a blue shuffle played on the bass strings, whilst each line of the song is sung, and then a musical response to the lyric is made on the treble strings at the end of each line. Listen to the tune, and then I'll take you through it. Before we look in detail at Shuffle and Fill, just a quick word about tablature. Now, it's not like sheet music, where you have to be able to sight read it, start at the first bar, play through it and work right through to the end, all in one go. The idea of tablature is it just tells you what's going on so that you can learn the piece. So break it down into small parts. Learn one bar at a time. Learn the first bar, then learn the second bar, put bars one and two together, and so on. You'll find that after a while you'll get quite quick at doing this and your brain will get used to assimilating that kind of information so that you'll play through tablature maybe oh, five or six times and you'll almost remember the piece. Right, let's start now working with Shuffle and Fill. Now it's called Shuffle and Fill because it has a blues shuffle followed by a blues fill. Now the shuffles are pretty much the same for each of the chords, uh, but watch the B and the A that come towards the end. There's a slightly different shuffle there that I'm using. The fills come out of chords and scales. Now blues is mostly a, a chord-oriented music, so that means that you'll go to the chord, twiddle about, go to another chord, and twiddle about. Uh, we're also using the blues scale though. Uh, for E, that would be E, G, a, B flat, B, D, back up to E. Now if you find all of those notes at the first three frets, you'd get E, G. So I'll be using that part of the time. You can find those notes elsewhere on the guitar fingerboard, of course, and you should start now trying to find them. OK, let's work through the tune a couple of bars at a time. Here's the E shuffle that we start with. Notice that I'm keeping my first finger in position on the second fret of the fifth string, even when I'm putting my third finger on the fourth fret of the fifth string. I'll do it again. Notice too that I'm muting with my right hand. You'll also notice, I'm sure, that I'm lifting my fingers off ever so slightly which kills the note. Now, there's a lot going on there in just a small bar, so stop now, learn the E shuffle, and then come back. I'll move on to the A bar, which is exactly the same as the E, so if you haven't got the E right yet, then you're not going to get the A either. It's exactly the same thing though, muting with the right hand, releasing the pressure of the left hand, here's the shuffle. So here's the two bars together. Now that is normally played 
where the singer is singing. Now comes the fill. So we sound our E chord, and we put a little fill in using chord notes or scale. I'm going to use both. The first part is from this little E7 chord. Maybe just two notes from it. Here we go. Notice the notes are grouped in threes. This is very common in blues. One, two, three, one, two, three. For the second part of that line, we have a blues scale. So I'll go up from the E. We'll use the B and the B flat, maybe. Maybe you'd want to learn the line that I've used or the one that's in the booklet, but really, essentially, you've got to make up your own. You're not going to be able to memorise enough phrases to last for every single blues that you want to play. So start messing around now and making up ideas. It really helps if you listen to other players. You would be surprised how much you pick up just by osmosis. OK. After the fill, we have another A shuffle for two bars. Another E chord, another fill. And I'll use both this little E7 shape and the blues scale back up to the shape. And it on an E to finish the phrase. We then have the B shuffle, which is a little different from our earlier one, so I'll show it to you slowly. Here we are. I'm barring the second fret with my first finger, and you can use either your third finger to cover the fourth string at the fourth fret. Some people like to use their fourth finger, but it uh, just depends how comfortable you feel with it. So it's up to you. Mm -hmm. 